In this video, I'm going to walk you all through my basic approach and search pattern when reading an MRI of the knee. This is meant to really serve as a basic and introductory approach to reading this kind of study that you can then build on as you get more reps looking at more MRIs of the knee. So when I start looking at a knee MRI, I actually like to go to the sagittal because I think it shows all the ligaments really nicely and some of the tendons as well. Um, so as I'm scrolling through, I'm going to stop here kind of near the midline and point out this very important structure right here, and this is the ACL. This is obviously very commonly injured in athletes. This is a perfect example of what a normal ACL should look like. The ACL, again, is this very dark structure here, and it should be this steep, dark band that you can track from the posterior part of the femur right here all the way into the anterior tibia, and it's this dark black line. If you see any discontinuity in the fibers, if you don't see the fibers at all, that suggests that the ACL is torn. This one is much more commonly torn in the PCL, which I'm gonna to go to next. So right here we have the PCL. It's not as clinically relevant. Here it is right here. It's not as commonly torn, and even if it is torn, assuming you're not an athlete, it's not necessarily something you always go in and fix. But the PCL is another important structure. I really like it on the sagittal. I think you can see it nicely here. Again, it should be this dark continuous band that you can track from the posterior aspect of the tibia to the femur here. And this is a normal PCL. And just like with the ACL, if you see discontinuity in the fibers or you just don't see the fibers at all, that suggests that it's torn. Now scrolling back through here, I'm gonna point out some other important structures. I'll first start with the quadriceps tendon, which is up here, all the quad muscles insert upon the patella. This is the patella or the kneecap. The quadriceps tendon inserts upon the patella and similarly we have the patellar tendon. This is the tendon that your doctor checks your reflexes with. They put the reflex hammer, hit this tendon, and that causes your leg to extend forward. Just like with the ACL and the PCL, you want to see continuity of the fibers. There should be a long dark band inserting upon the patella, either superiorly if it's the quadriceps or inferiorly if it's the patellar tendon. If you see any discontinuity in the fibers, that could mean that it's torn. Moving on to the next bit of anatomy, I'm gonna talk about the menisci. We have two menisci. We have a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus. And I'll stop right here and I'm gonna actually point out the meniscus here. So this is one of the menisci here. It should look kind of like a bow tie. Having a meniscus tear is almost inevitable as we get older. And a lot of them may not necessarily be clinically significant, but they can certainly cause symptoms. A lot of people talk about a clicking or popping sensation. So they're very clinically relevant and they tear quite frequently. When you're looking at the menisci, they should have this nice bow tie appearance and you shouldn't see any discontinuity or fluid signal within the meniscus. When I talk about fluid signal, there are certain sequences where fluid shows up as bright. So if you see something bright within the meniscus, that means it's probably torn. And similarly to what, when I was talking about the ligaments earlier, if you just don't see the meniscus, for instance, if I stop at this slice here and then this part of the meniscus is just missing, that would be something called a displaced meniscus tear. There's one called a bucket handle. That's kind of a classic meniscal tear where the fragment is displaced and you just don't see the meniscus when you stop on the sagittal. So in this case, this is a normal meniscus and this is also a normal meniscus here. So good example of normal. The more normal you see, the easier it'll be for you to identify abnormal. Another thing I like to look at on the sagittal is the cartilage. So the cartilage is this gray band. You see it everywhere. Here's the cartilage of the femur. We have it posteriorly. Then the patella has cartilage too, which I'm circling here. Similar to the meniscus, it seems like just about everyone as we age has wear and tear on the cartilage and you start to develop what we call chondrosis, which is just damage to the cartilage where it starts to fissure or break off or you just have thinning of the cartilage. In this case, I would say this is pretty normal cartilage and you see it outlining all the bones. And I just like to track the cartilage, look at it, look for obviously any big fragments that are missing. In this case, there's not that. So this is pretty normal looking cartilage, but I think the sagittal is a nice place to look at the cartilage. And I'm gonna go to the coronal view and just talk about a couple other ligaments that I think are very important and clinically relevant. So the first one is the medial collateral ligament and it's this dark band here. It's kind of hard to see but I think the coronal is one of the better places to look at it compared to the sagittal. And then on the other side, opposite from the medial collateral ligament, we have the lateral collateral ligament. This is the proximal portion of it here. And then I'm gonna scroll through and I just want you to track it. You can see it here. And then it inserts down here on the fibula. So here it is again. You can track it here and then it inserts upon the fibula. This is the distal aspect of it inserting on the fibula here. You can also look at the ACL and the PCL on the coronal. You get a look at the ACL here and as I come forward, here's ACL, here's ACL inserting on the tibia. So that's another look at the ACL. Similarly, you have the PCL. Here's PCL here. 
PCL here. So you can track both the ACL and the PCL on the coronal as well. It's another good view of them. And you can catch something subtle on the coronal that you maybe miss on the sagittal. So it's a good thing to look at the ACL and the PCL on the coronal as well. You also have the axial view. The axial view gives you additional views of all the ligaments I've already pointed out. I'm not going to go through them one by one again here. Obviously on the medial side, you've got the medial collateral ligament. You can kind of watch here where my mouse is. That's MCL. On the other side, you've got the LCL. Here's part of the LCL here, inserting upon the fibula. And the axial is a good place to look at all your vessels, look at the muscles. You can actually get a glimpse of some of the nerves. Just make sure there's not any extra pathology outside of the actual knee joint within the soft tissues. So the axial, again, is a good place to look at all the anatomy I've already talked about on the sagittal and coronal views. Another important thing with a knee MRI is to think about the bones. You obviously always want to look at the bones on every study that you read because that young kid with knee pain, it may not be a ligament issue, it may not be a torn ACL, it could be a bone tumor. So you'll know bone tumor when you see it. I'm going to show you an example later, but look at the signal within the bones. You should see nice continuous bright signal within the bones here. This is a proton density image. I'm not going to get into the specifics of that, but you should see homogeneous signal within the bones. Whenever you see something circumscribed that's dark, for instance, as dark as the signal of the muscle, then you start worrying about a tumor. So I'm looking at the bones here. You can look at them in the coronal. In addition to tumors, think about fractures. You have your trauma-related fractures, your stress fractures, your insufficiency fractures. In the case of a proton density, you'd see dark signal within the bone, typically a linear dark signal if you're talking about a fracture. Another thing to think about is the joint space, which is lined by our synovium. So look for joint fluid. In this case, there is not a knee joint effusion here. I'll show you an example of a knee joint effusion later. But you always have to think about, is there fluid in the joint space? Is there synovial thickening that could suggest a synovitis or inflammatory process of some kind, either infectious or inflammatory in the case of like a rheumatoid arthritis, or if it's infectious in the case of like a septic arthritis. So think about the joint space, look for fluid within the joint. I'll show you an example of fluid within the knee joint shortly. And so that's it. You look at your tendons, your ligaments, you look at the bones, you look in the joint space, you look at all the extra stuff. So the muscle, the soft tissue, the nerves. Once you've done all that, you've essentially looked at everything you can look at within a knee. Again, this was meant to serve as an introductory approach and to show you the commonly affected anatomy. And now I'll show you a few example cases of just classic knee joint pathology. So I've got my first case up here and I'm gonna start scrolling through it and let you take a look at it before I start talking about it. So when I was talking about the ligaments, I mentioned that if you just don't see the ligaments at all, that can mean that they're torn or ruptured. Well, in this case, we have our PCL here, but I want you to try to identify the ACL. So as you can see, I'm going to stop here. This is about where the ACL should be. And do you see how we just don't see it? That's because the ACL is ruptured. So this is a ruptured ACL, super classic, the young athlete that has a pivot shift kind of motion. They feel a pop. That's an ACL tear. And this is what it looks like on imaging. So I've got another case pulled up. And in this case, I just want to show you what a joint effusion looks like. So this is a fluid sensitive sequence, meaning fluid shows up as bright. And see all this bright stuff here? That is a knee joint effusion. So causes of knee joint effusions, you have your inflammatory arthritis, like a rheumatoid arthritis, or all sorts of different arth inflammatory arthropathies for that matter. You've got your septic arthritis, which is very much a clinical diagnosis, but imaging can certainly contribute to the diagnosis. And then you have trauma, of course, if you have a torn ruptured ACL, a lot of people have an effusion. There's many different kinds of effusions, but the main learning point here is this bright signal. This is an effusion. You can catch them on radiographs too if you look for density within the suprapatellar region. Obviously an MRI is the best test to look for an effusion. And then this is what an effusion looks like. It's just this bright signal wrapping around the bones within the knee joint. So I got my next case pulled up. This is the axial. This is a fluid sensitive sequence, meaning fluid shows up as bright. The first thing I want you to notice is just what I showed you before. This is joint fluid here, it's bright. You can see it all around here. So there's an effusion. I talked about causes of effusions. You got trauma, arthritis, either infectious or inflammatory. In this case, it's trauma. So I want you to look at the patella. So again, this is fluid shows up as bright, and that includes edema, edema such as the setting of a fracture. So but the patella is bright. So you have to wonder, is there a contusion? Is there a fracture? Well, I'm gonna pull up the sagittal T1, and keep in mind that fluid does not show up as bright on T1. So a fracture would look differently than what we just saw. So I'm scrolling through and I'm gonna stop here. This dark band going through the mid pole of the patella, that's a fracture. That's a non-displaced fracture, meaning the patella isn't just frankly disrupted and the fragments are displaced. 
but there is a fracture line going through the patella, and that's what a fracture looks like on MRI. So I'm going to scroll through it again and let you get a look at it. But this dark band going through the middle of the patella is the fracture. So I've got one last case here pulled up. I just want to show you what a tumor looks like on MRI. So it's obviously not subtle. Like I said earlier, if there's a tumor, you'll see it. As I was saying before, the signal in the bone marrow should be very homogeneous. Therefore, it's very easy to identify what's wrong. And that's this tumor here. This is a classic giant cell tumor. But notice this circumscribed lesion that has altered signal compared to the normal bone marrow. That's a great classic look for a tumor. And the giant cell tumor is a very commonly talked about tumor, but this is a giant cell tumor of the knee. This is what a tumor would look like on MRI. That's all I've got for y'all on my introduction to the knee MRI. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's helpful to at least serve as a baseline that you can then build off of. Thank you again for watching and see you next time.